Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am going to be... I've got the wrong book. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Horrible Science, Frightful Flight by Nick Arnold and Tony DeSoules. This is the Royal Air Force Museum edition. I picked this up at RAF Cosford when I went to visit there with my mum. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating with you at the end. So, science with the squishy bits left in. In this special edition of Frightful Flight, discover all the dreadful details your teachers just won't tell you. Find out who put a parachute on a puppy and how to build a flying saucer. Horrible science, filling children's heads with mind-blowing facts since 1996. So I enjoy this, we have this like illustration of comparative sizes and there's the Eiffel Tower there and there's someone at the top saying C'est très haut, which means it's very high. In the uh, same way that, uh, well I guess it's pronounced haute couture, which is high fashion. <laughs> A little fact here, bet you never knew. If you weighed the air in your bedroom, you'd find it weighed as much as your body. The total weight of the air around our planet is over five million billion billion tons. That is a lot of air. Oh, and there's an experiment we can do. Yeah, boy, I forgot about this. Okay, we're gonna see if this works. Okay, so we're gonna demonstrate how air resistance works. So here we have a, a ball of paper, right? So this one's in a ball, and this one is in a sheet, and we should find, if I hold them up here, I'm gonna have to hold them in shot so you can see I'm dropping them from the same height. There we go, that's about the same height, right? We should find that this drops faster because this one has more air resistance, and it has more air molecules poking up at that thing. Right, are we ready? Are we ready? Oh, it worked! Uh, so this is the, the fate of a guy, what was his full name? I've got to try and find his full name. Alberto Santos Dumont. And uh, in the 1900s, he was the most famous flyer in the world, slash the only flyer in the world. So we have here. But after planes became popular, Alberto didn't do so well. Although he was the first person to fly a powered plane in Europe, his planes always seemed to crash. As he grew older, many people thought he was mad. He spent time in mental hospitals and dreamt of making a pair of wings and flying from a window. Quite unfairly, he blamed himself for the way planes had been used to kill people in war. One day, Santos Dumont was staying in a hotel in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Civil war was raging and the aging flyer spotted a plane dropping bombs. What have I done? He muttered. He went up to his room and took his own life. Here we have a little bit about hummingbirds and how they inspired helicopters. Unlike rotors, our wings beat backwards and forwards in a figure of eight, up to 70 times a second. And they also have a long beak that's handy for drinking nectar from flowers. I bet you never knew. In order to produce so much energy, a hummingbird needs to drink half its own weight in sweet, sticky nectar. If a man worked that hard, he would need to eat 1,140 hamburgers every day just to get energy. And then he'd heat up until his body burst into flames. And this is kind of a crazy saying here, uh, crazy information here. It says, In the First World War, the life of a fighter pilot was exciting and glorious, and sure. In 1915, a British pilot in France could expect to live just 11 days, and pilots were sent into battle with just five hours of flying experience. The British, French, or American pilots weren't even allowed parachutes because they might try to escape from their plane rather than fight. And this is crazy. Today there are airports all over the planet, and the biggest ones, such as King Khalid Airport in Saudi Arabia, are larger than small countries. It's four times bigger than the entire island of Bermuda. Wow. So yeah. Frightful Science, no, Horrible Science, Frightful Flight by Nick Arnold and Tony DeSauls. Uh, it wasn't the original Terry Deary writing, so there was something just slightly off because of that, I think, but uh, I still enjoyed it. And uh, I gave this a four out of five. It helped for me that I picked it up on a little day trip with my uh, with my mum as well, uh, but would recommend whether you're a kid or an adult if you want to learn the basics of flight. So there we have it, that's what I thought of Frightful Flight by Nick Arnold and Tony DeSauls. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book, and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.